Good morning, everyone. Today is June 20th. This is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform. My name is Anne-Marie Band, and we're looking at SPY right now. It gapped down in the pre-market this morning when things started trading. And so far, this gap is something that we need to take a look at, right? The top of the gap found sellers and the, uh, well, that would be the bottom of the gap, wouldn't it? And the top of the gap is going to be someplace that looks like resistance. Okay. So what do we want to look at if we are trying to trade this today? We want to watch for the support at 437, the resistance at 439, and pullbacks are very likely to be buy zones, certainly at the first pass. When does a pullback stop being a buy zone? When it doesn't bounce back to the prior high. And that really is what we are watching. From a bigger picture perspective, we've got the monthly formations here. A lot of heavy congestion floating around these zones, anywhere from 434 all the way down to 431. So things could be a little bit messy there. Let's move to a weekly, see if we see anything better. I think not, but we can certainly see from an hourly formation what we've got going on all the way up to 440. My suspicion is that price action is a bit muted today. A lot of the uh, reports that I read, everybody's talking about increased volatility, potential pullbacks, all sorts of things like that. So, you know, I'm not particularly worried about anything in general per se. Let's take a look at the queues. And here's where the weekly queues are sitting, right at the old support zones that we were looking at last week, pulling down from them. Notice, bounce at the bottom of the gap, reached it a little bit, and then the top of the gap so that top of the gap looks like 368. And the wick here, potentially buyers, though I'd hate to see it do that. That'd be kind of messy. Look at the close of that candlestick formation, 365. So we're looking at a base of 365 to 367 with a gap into 368. Take a look at all of this sideways pressure up near 370. That looks like resistance to me in general. All right. So anything that pushes to the upside here, you know, it's got some sideways formations. But indeed, this part tells me that we should be a little bit congested. And the first pass sellers excuse me, the first pass group is going to be sellers, right? Since it's got this downside pressure, it's got to start making higher lows before it resolves to the north. Let's take a look at the IWM. IWM still very sideways, right? Not holding the pressure like the other instruments. Still the same sorts of zones. Lost 189 really just after hitting it, still holding the higher lows from that perspective and coming into frontline resistance, which my suspicion is probably around this area, right? Holding the zone, look at the bottoming formation here. I still suspect people are gonna be dip buyers in the IWM for right now in terms of a little bit of sector rotation. Wait for it to pull back to 185. Top of the range is, looks like maybe 186 at the gap, at the base of the gap. Let's move it up here. Yeah, something like 186. So we'll be watching for that. Watch the gap, right? From 185, 86, 
all the way up. Let's take a look at the ES. Hopefully they have rotated this over. 4442 looks like they have. Here we are up at the top of this motion. Very close to prior highs from last year. Right now, pulling back just a little bit. Again, most of the newsletters that I read uh, this morning really talking about the likelihood of a pullback or some volatility expansion. Take a look at this formation, right? It really has been in a pretty solid fade and every bounce has been oops, somewhat of a sell zone. And so that's what we'll be looking for, still making lower lows and lower highs. So this area we are going to have to pay attention to, right? Is it anywhere near anything that looks like a gap? No, it can go all the way up this. And I wouldn't be surprised if it did it simply because dip buyers have been doing this. I don't even know how long since October. I guess something like that. And so the baseline 4430. If you go to the Slack channel, you know that I've got these in much more defined patches for us to be able to trade with our zones. But that really is what we are looking at with 4450, giving us eh, potentially the next resistance area up to 44.50, right? 44.50.50, something like that. But the bounces have been sell zones. Anticipate that they're going to move a little bit faster. Overnight formations are quite bullish, and so they're going to want to take some profit into the open. It might get down into uh, the housing starts number that's going to come at 8.30, that fade is going to find buyers. All right, let's take a look at the queues. Look at these things, just a beastly move to the north, doing very, very nicely, but stopping at the old resistance zones. I find that to be particularly interesting, right? The next line in the sand up here is maybe 15,530, somewhere around the heavy congestion. 15,560. Okay, as we take a look at the hourly chart, we can see that price action doing well, holding well over 15,000. 15,170, 15,180. You can see a congestion zone here. Looking for a support ledge at 15,224. And realize that even though we're having lower highs and lower lows, this overnight bullish package of pricing is very likely to breach all the way up into the 15,270 area simply because that's what, that's what buyers have been doing in order to cover. The dip buyers have come in. Uh, all of the stops have gotten run for the shorts and, you know, I anticipate that this is the same kind of thing that we're going to look at today, right? So here are these levels. You want to watch them carefully, see how price action moves. Let's take a look at the RTY. I think there's probably going to be a lot going on in oil today also, but really not going to discuss that too awfully much, but with the RTY resistance still up around 1900, right? 1894 is really, this, this chart is still landlocked. I think it ought to come back, chop around 1880, and then, you know, potentially pull back into a support zone. So that's what I like. I like looking for the support zone here in this particular formation. Very quickly, let's go to the CL. All right, this one uh, really bouncing, but then 
Uh, some China news came out and now it's pulling back. Is it likely to pull back into a support zone? Yeah, I mean, this thing's bullish. It's going to pull back into a support zone. You know, um, the disconnect here, it's going to be pretty interesting, but m my suspicion is that we've got prices that will hold somewhere around 70, 70. And so pullbacks into that area at the first pass should find buyers. Hey, listen, if it bounces and it cannot get back above 71, then that support zone is going to be in jeopardy. Okay, that's the big thing to look at there. Last thing, let's take a look at gold. Gold continues to pull back. Uh, this is the wrong contract. Let's go here. Um, they are in rollover. This contract is about to expire, so they are in rollover here. And so really we are looking at formations that continually sell off above this 2000 area. And they've been buy zones, but really down here at the 1670, 1680. Now, I have no idea what's going to go on. Everybody else is raising rates because they didn't raise them as fast as we did. So Denmark raised, Bank of England raised, um, you know, a ton of things going on from that perspective. So we could see a bounce here in gold um, as the dollar weakens against the other instruments. All right. But... We really are sitting in very congested areas, anywhere near 2,000. You're going to watch for a blow off top and then another fade. All right. Take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.